I'll tell. Get Carol out first. One thing puzzles me. But if there is a time drift in hyperspace, why don't we ever get caught in it? I mean, why don't we ever end up in another time? Assuming there is such a thing as time drift, perhaps one of its natural laws is that matter will always return to its own time when it leaves hyperspace. Yes, could be. Look, I might be a bit stupid, but Jerry Kai, remember him? <laughs> I'll say, and the Cyclops. Yeah, I was trying to forget about him. You're going to say something, weren't you, Ginch? Oh, it's nothing. Something about Jedi Kai said to you. Something about hyperspace. Yeah, I thought you said you couldn't read other people's minds. We don't. We can't, only each other's. Ginge, what were you going to say? Well, I didn't understand it, really. I mean, it sounded a bit stupid at the time. With everything that's happened since, I'm not so sure. Ginge, what is it? Well, he said that this here hyperspace was everywhere and nowhere and... Oh, I don't know. I can't remember. I didn't understand it anyway. Everywhere and nowhere. That fragment of time that isn't time that lies between the end of one microsecond and the beginning of the next. That space that isn't space that lies between the curving dimensions of eternity. Hey, that's it. That's what he said exactly. How do you know? I was there. I remember it perfectly. The dimension that makes star travel possible and time travel possible. That's what he said. We use hyperspace for star travel already. Eh? Yes, we do, Ginch. So, I suppose time travel ought to be possible. She all right? I've reanimated her. Good. And she can stay that way, providing you stand by your word. I have work to do. You can show me how the beta ray works later. Put them in their cages. I give the orders on this ship. Is that so? Copy and obey my orders. Put them in their cages. What are you doing? That creature of yours, the Medusa, it's no use. Their combined minds are too powerful for it. When the girl comes round, they'll be able to overcome it again. Then what will happen? I don't know. They'll escape, of course. The Medusa can hold one, but not two. Then we must dispose of the girl. No, not yet. I need a micro spice. What are you making? And a neutron catalyzer. I want to go back to the Tower of London. What for if I recognise you? I'd probably cut your head off. Do you think it's wise, Stephen? Well, they won't even recognise me without my AE suit on. You know, what I can't understand is why there hasn't been a big outcry. If the crown jewels really were taken. Although they're taken all right. I have been monitoring all the government's secret communication channels. There has been a maximum security clampdown on the incident. They are worried because the beef eater who saw Stephen described the AE suit he was wearing. It's probably in a loony bin by now. Oh, I hope not. No. They have given him a number of tests and established that he was telling the truth. That is why they are worried. Do they suspect about us, Tim? No. At the moment, they are examining a number of improbable theories. What do you want to go for, anyway? Oh, I don't know. Perhaps I might have to claw something. Or anything to help us find Carol. I just want to go and have a look. All right, I'll come with you. Now, be careful, you two. And don't do anything to attract attention. We've got enough trouble as it is without you two getting done for pinching the crown jewels. Don't worry, John. Carol? Carol, are you all right? Open her cage. What does it do? This silencer band has the same function as your Medusa. It stops them communicating telepathically? Yes. But she'll take it off. She can't. <laughs> the pain would kill her. Now the boy. And now the boy. This will make sure that you keep your side of the bargain. If I make a promise, I stick to it. And so you had better, for Carol's sake. 
What about Carol? She's unconscious again. She needs help. She recover. What <laughs> day? Crown jewels we want, it's Carol. Yeah. Come on, let's get back to the lab. Yeah. Now then, Peter. I want you to adjust this device so a non-telepath can operate it. When I was apprenticed to the Order, I swore I'd rather die than reveal the secret. Stop delaying me. If you want to die, you can. But you will see Carol die first. Now then. We have to get inside here to make adjustments. There's a telekinetic seal. It undoes like this. It's not working. But when I run my finger on the edge like this, the apparatus should open up. But it's not working. That's because of the silencer band round your head. Has the same function as the Medusa takes away your special powers then I can't operate the equipment. We must cut our way in. Do that and the apparatus will self-destruct. Any tricks from you and Carol will die. Fool! Trying to call for help. Now get on with it. Where are you? Give me your coordinates. What is it, John? Where are you? What is it, John? I just picked up a message from hyperspace, Ginger. A message about Carol. Well, how is she? She's in great danger, but at least we know where she is. I'm going to hyperspace. Hey, John, you think you should? What? Well, it sounds to me like somebody's trying to lure you into a trap. You could be right, Ginger. You probably are, but I'm going anyway. So am I. Me too. No pain. So is me. Look, one of us has got to stay behind, and you're the youngest. Come on, Steve. Hey, John. If I can be of any help. Thanks for the offer, Ginger, but you stay here and see no harm comes to Kenny. We haven't got an A suit that'll fit you anyway. As long as there is a drift effect in all dimensional planes, yes. Right. Uh, and Tim wishes luck. I wish you luck. That goes for me. Thanks, Ginge. Let me come with you. No kidding. Coordinates set, Tim? Coordinates set. Right, let's go. Cinderella. And what does that make me? One of the ugly sisters, I suppose. You said it, Ginge. They'll be gone for hours. Come on. Let's see if you've got any latent telepathic aptitude. Come again? See if you've got any hidden powers. You never know. You might be one of us after all. No chance. Agree? I should have been born a king. You're nothing but an overgrown child living out your fantasies. Don't you patronise me, young woman. I'll have you know that I am a count. In your century, my family were true aristocrats. 
Blue blood runs in my veins. The result of too much inbreeding, I might have guessed. What do you mean? You are a sap born into a world of tomorrow, people. All right, I feel sorry for you. You must have suffered. But that's no reason to take it out of Peter or me. You, you and your kind. You think you're so clever. You think you control the civilized universe and that only a telepath has a right to anything. Well, listen, young lady. Stop I have you. Grabowski. And you, Rabowski. He's deranged. Whatever you do, you mustn't let him know the secret of time travel, even if we both have to die. Peter. Peter, you didn't. I had to. He would have killed you. He will anyway. Oh, nothing. It's hopeless, John. We're wasting our time. Have you got any better ideas? No. Well, keep looking, then. All right, then. What is it? Now that Peter has modified the time key so that I'm able to operate it, I want you to return to the 20th century, to the headquarters of the Tomorrow People, and bring them back here. It's your few. Why don't you go and get them yourself? I have to remain here to operate the time key. I could do that. I'll stay here. You take Coffin and the Medusa. So you can cut off the time arch and leave me stranded in the 20th century. <laughs> no, Robowski. You must go. But think just for one moment of the importance of your mission. To capture a few kids and bring them back here for you to slaughter? Robowski, what's the universe like out there? The universe that has driven you into the empty exile of hyperspace. I've told you before. It's full of those damned telepaths. Exactly. But supposing it wasn't? What do you mean? It is, and that is an irrevocable fact. You were telling me earlier how delicate the time balance is, how easily upset. Supposing it could be upset so that there were no telepaths. A universe of men. Just think about it. Men to be your friends, men to be your enemies. No more loneliness, no more exile. How different my life would have been. Exactly. Go down the time lanes, my friend, and strangle the development of the Earth's telepaths at the very root. Bring me the Tomorrow People, and you will be a man amongst men again. Yes, I could. And I will. Good. Prepare yourself. Come on, Ginge, make a guess. You did it. You got one right. Yeah, I did, didn't I? But look all those others I didn't get right. Come on, try again, quickly. And again. That makes two on a trot. Hey, maybe I'm one of you after all. What do you think, Tim? Is Ginger tomorrow person? There is no evidence to that effect. I'm afraid there is nothing remarkable about getting two consecutive cards right, considering the number of attempts that have been made. You mean I'm not one of them? I'm just ordinary. All right, Roboski, into the time arch. The time lanes are open. Be careful, though. There'll be hostile saps wandering about, because Peter has not stopped the flow of time on Earth. Mind if I smoke, kid? Yeah, I'll mind, but go ahead anyway. Can't. I haven't got any cigarettes. Hey, Tim, you can't imagine me up some cigarettes, can you? It isn't magic when I make things appear, Ginge. It is a process of submolecular remanipulation. Oh, yeah? Well, my old man calls it falling off the back of a lorry. Well, listen, you can't sub-molecular whatever it is, a packet of cigarettes, can you? I'm sorry, Ginge. I am not programmed to perform that function. You mean you won't? I'm afraid not. Sorry, Ginge. Come on, Tim, don't be a flaming squirrel. I'm gasping for a snout, honest. To coin one of your phrases, Ginge, no chance. In that case, I don't get myself. Flaming door, then? Please. Ivy! Ah! Oh, 
Strange one. Out there, this King Flaming Kong, Dracula, the, the works. Tim, show him what's outside. <laughs> Listen, scat kid, scram, vanish, jump, whatever it is you do, while you can. Get the hell out of here. Tim, get John and Stephen, call them back, fast. I can't get through, Kenny. Then you, John kid, look, get out of here while you can. Look, they're getting ready to break down the door. I can't. Look, kid, don't worry about me. I'm going to look after myself. That stun gun's no use, Ginge. It's on charge. I can't jump, Ginge. Tim, I can't jump. I can't get away. It's that creature. It's stopping Kenny's special powers. That means you're stuck here with me. It's about the size of it. Well, I promise to look after you, kid, and look after you, I will. Now, you stay in there. No rage, not a squeak. Do you understand? Gee. Just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> John, Stephen, come in, please. Tim, what is it? I'm jaunting you back immediately. We were attacked. I couldn't get through to you. Where's Ginger and Kenny? John, Stephen! Kenny! Ginger was dragged away by a sap of an away. android. Ginger, Ginger, me in the dark room. Ginger? They took him, Kenny. You. <sighs> Blundering fool, he's not one of them. He was in their headquarters. Where's your Medusa? He killed it. Cobbin, take him out and lock him up. Coffin, take him out and lock him up. Coffin, take him out and lock him up. Idiot, can't you get the simplest thing right? I won't have you talk to me like that. I won't put up with it. It's time I made a stand. I sent you for telepaths. Can't you tell the difference between telepaths and those sub-creatures? You are talking about men. Men like me. Yes. No wonder your species is almost extinct. Jim! Carol, are you all right? Oh, all right, all right, all right. You oversized dummy, somebody ought to report you! That silver Frankenstein's got a grip like a power vice. It's where are the others? Are they all right? Well, they were when I left them. Oh, John and Stephen were up in hyper space looking for you, and I had Kenny in the dark room. That's a relief, then there are still three of us free. And this must be that spaceship up in hyper space they were looking for, eh? That's right, Ginge. 500 years away in time. If submolecular remanipulation is to work on this scale, we will all have to use maximum concentration. Well, one thing's for sure, it wasn't Ginge they came for, it was us. Tim, any open those coordinates? I was able to take readings on the source of the humming noise. I have collated them and got an approximate coordinate in hyperspace. Tim, you're a marvel. Set them up, please. I'm coming with you this time. No, you're not. You're not suited up for one thing. And for another, you're staying here. Look, after all that's happened, we can't leave the lab without someone to look after Tim. I have set up those coordinates. Right, come on. Check my equipment, please, Tim. All equipment functioning correctly, Stephen. I have had the stun guns on rapid charge. They are now ready.
Checked him. Yes, John. Everything is in order. Right. Let's go. I shouldn't bother, Ginge. We've already tried. <laughs> well, I'm not giving up, though. I've seen tougher licks than this in my time. <sighs> Don't worry, Carol. We'll soon be looking back on this and laughing. <laughs> I like him. He's nice. This isn't a police station lockup, Ginge. We're in hyperspace on board a spaceship. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting all about that. Ah. You know, when I was a kid, I always wanted to be a spaceman. My old man always said I was a nutcase. I'm beginning to think he was right. What's that noise? It's the intruder alarm. Looks like we've got visitors. It's them. Friends of yours? Friends of that girl. Kenny, we've sighted the spaceship. Great! Be careful, though. We'll be all right. We have a horizontal and a vertical sight line. See if you can get them with one shot. I've waited a long time for this. 